So today we're going to have a look at another aspect of our amplifier design and the next thing I thought we'd look at is input switching. So my idea here is we'd start with some right angle RCA connectors and some small signal relays. Now what I thought I'd do, I'd go with electronic control uh, but didn't really want to use a microcontroller because I hate writing code. That's what I do in my day job and I'm damned if I'm going to do it in my spare time. So we have some Darlington arrays that will drive the relays for us, nice and simple. And I've gone with some 4017 CMOS Decade Counter Decoder ICs. So the plan here is to offer a push button that allows the user to step from one input to the next. It's not the best user interface in the world, but it'll do. We've gone with four inputs. So on the 4017, we've taken the fifth output and driven it back around to the reset input in the time-honored tradition. So we're making use of this Darlington array here, uh, which greatly simplifies driving the relays, and it's all quite simple stuff. So one of the issues that you face when you're doing a relay switching is capacitive coupling from your unused inputs. This is particularly a case if your output's driving something which has a sufficiently high input impedance, then you are going to get some of your unused signals coming through to the output, mostly because inside the relay itself, the, the contacts are physically close to each other and there's a lot of scope for capacitive coupling. So what we've gone with is we're using two relays to switch each channel. So as you can see, we've got the relay coils in parallel like that. And what we're trying to do is make sure that for all of the inputs that are not used, the contact that is next to the one that's driving the output will be grounded whenever that input is not in use. So these two move together. So when this input is in use, they move to that position there and we have a path through to the output. Otherwise, this contact here, which is physically close to the one that's connected to the output, is connected to ground. So we shouldn't see any of the signal from the unused inputs. So my plan here was that I would mount the selector switch and the LEDs remotely. That's why they don't appear on this diagram. But we what we have here is a header which we're going to connect to a short length of ribbon cable. The idea is that we have the LEDs and the switch on the front panel while all of this can sit towards the rear where the RCA jacks are. In this case I wanted to go with a single current limiting resistor for all the LEDs so we've put it here on the anode side so we're switching the cathodes and that meant that we had to go with a 5 volt supply because I wanted to avoid the situation where we put too much reverse voltage across the LEDs. So by going with 5 volt relays and a 5 volt supply, those LEDs should be safe. Only other points of note really here are the, uh, this RC network here, which is to try and debounce the switch contact so that the 4017 doesn't step on through several inputs. Uh, in response to a single button push, because that would be a pain in the bum. So I was pondering the design and layout of the daughter board that would have the LEDs and the push button on it, just thinking about you know, what sort of LEDs I'd like, what shape, what spacing, how I'd like that to look on the front panel, when I had a thought. It was a really silly idea, a ridiculous piece of unnecessary affectation that I thought, might just be worth doing. So what I thought is, rather than simply putting the LEDs on the daughter board, with an appropriate high voltage supply, some high voltage switching transistors, of which I've got a big box there, we could bung in a Nixie tube. I mean, that's absurd. That makes no sense. I think I've got to do it. So that's where we're up to at the moment with this amplifier design. I'm just in the middle of doing the PCB layout for this input switching circuit. And I hope you enjoy this little update. And thanks again for watching.